We'd actually just uh, taken off. Uh, I guess we did a lazy loop and then headed east. And all of a sudden, uh, this loud pop, 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 really loud and a ripping sound. And as this is all going on, we're looking around and trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, it sounded, bull it sounded like bowling balls were falling from the overhead bins. And the very last thing that happened was all the interior plastic panels and insulation started ripping out from the sides of the airplane aircraft uh, in the same row, both sides and up on the top. Right now at 11, new incredible images helping detail a disastrous rocket launch tonight. We're finding out what it means for the astronauts waiting in space and whether new technology may have doomed the liftoff from the start. I noticed like the plane was like falling out of the air. An unexpected sight near the Point Magoo Naval Air Station Wednesday afternoon. Everybody was getting out of their cars and just standing there. Witnesses say they're used to seeing planes flying overhead. They didn't expect to see one crash. Right when it nose down, it just hit. Like, it was just that fast. Like, there's no way the guy could have got out or anything. They were off approach into the runway to Point Magoo Naval Air Station, probably about a mile off the runway at this point. Uh, unfortunately, he collided with ground in an agricultural field. Uh, from the looks of the field, um, it was probably at a pretty steep angle when he hit. Have an airplane down at Big Thunder Airport. We have a huge large two-story commercial building in fire showing. These are some of the first images, moments after a small plane struck the roof of a pilot training facility, leaving this gaping hole. The plane was a Beechcraft King Air 200 like this one. Shortly after takeoff, the only person on board, 53-year-old pilot Mark Goldstein, radioed for help. The uh, aircraft is on the roof. We believe there are remains there. Uh, we also believe that there are remains inside the building. Now we turn to the story that dominated so much of the news coverage over this past weekend. The catastrophe in the desert. The feds tonight are searching for what caused the crash of that Virgin Galactic spacecraft on Friday. The pilot somehow lived. Tragically, the co-pilot did not. And now the day when civilians can soar into space as paying customers may be even further out of reach. Speaking of close calls, look at this. That is a propeller that broke off a plane and sliced through the fuselage of an Air Canada plane, tearing into a seat and hitting a passenger in the head. A scary evening in the skies. I don't think any parent um, that saw something like that wouldn't put themselves in the shoes of those, those, those parents. It was, it was very uh, emotional. JetBlue Flight 1786 bound for Boston from Pittsburgh. On board, a two-year-old little boy unconscious and not breathing. His mother, father, and older brother were bearing witness to their loved one in cardiac arrest. They were very upset and they were very concerned. However, they maintained good composure. The incident involving Dolores O'Riordan occurred on the scheduled daily Aer Lingus service from New York to Shannon, just as it landed before 5 a.m. Miss O'Riordan is being questioned at Shannon Gartha Station about an incident on the aircraft from which an air hostess was assaulted. The air hostess had to be treated in hospital. Miss O'Riordan is also being questioned about an alleged assault on a Gartha as the arrest was being made. Miss O'Riordan, who's 43 and a native of Ballybricken in County Limerick, is a member of the Cranberries group who achieved international fame in the mid-90s and have sold almost 50 million albums. She was a judge on RTE's The Voice programme last year and also performed in Limerick at the start of its year as City of Culture. to flying high as the lead singer of U2. It's a beautiful day. But this morning, Bono is just thankful to be alive. After a cargo door on a private Learjet he was traveling on, detached from the plane, falling 8,000 feet in the air, luggage flying out. 
the Irish rocker and four friends were almost at the end of a two-hour flight from Dublin to Berlin on a Learjet 60 like this one, heading to Berlin to accept a Bambi Entertainment Award tonight. But like a pro, the superstar didn't miss a beat after the incident, meeting with a government minister later that day. Breaking news out of Chicago, a small plane crashes into a home. So Melinda's at the breaking news desk right now with new details this half hour. Melinda? Well, Patrick and Marianne, firefighters are not able to search for the pilot in the airplane because the house it hit is just too unstable. Take a look at the scene. The tail is sticking nearly straight up from that home. Firefighters say it plunged onto the roof, down through the living room, and into the basement. The small plane crashed into that home near Chicago Midway International Airport around 3 o'clock this morning. Firefighters say two elderly people inside the home made it out safely. The eldest daughter of Korean Air's owner has resigned from her post as vice president of the airlines after causing a major social uproar for her meltdown on a flight last week. On Tuesday, Korean Air chairman Cho Yang-ho has officially accepted Cho yang as resignation as chief of Cal Flight Services. He also apologized for his daughter's actions. This morning, officials looking for clues as to why a small plane crashed in suburban Maryland, killing six people. Listen to the moment the control tower realized the people on board the plane, called a phenom, were in danger. Hey guys, I think that phenom just came up short. What? Oh, we got a phenom crash at the end of the runway call uh, emergency services. Chinese authorities vote to severely punish Chinese travelers who drew hot water and noodles on a Thai flight attendant and threatened to bomb the plane after they became enraged over sitting arrangements. China National Tourism Administration said Saturday the tourists disrupted the flight, hurt other passengers and badly damaged the overall image of the Chinese people. It comes at a time when the Chinese are traveling more but also becoming notorious for rough behavior. Yeah, Clarice, uh, attorney Mark Stanley was telling me he has uh, logged millions of miles with American Airlines. He's an experienced flyer, but he says he's never experienced anything like this before. Turbulence so rough, he said that a lot of the people on board wondered if they'd even make it out alive. It was all Dallas attorney Mark Stanley could do to keep his cell phone steady. Out of nowhere, it just fed and plates and everything went flying. It was Flight 280, a Boeing 777, en route from Seoul to DFW Airport. An hour and a half into the flight, they hit massive turbulence off the coast of Japan. Show me the bowl that hit your head. It broke. The turbulence was likely caused by the winter storm that passed over Japan, creating a low-pressure system seen here in satellite animation over the last 12 hours. It was definitely frightening, and it did get... Weather was bad off Indonesia's coast, but was it bad enough to play a role in Flight 8501's disappearance? CNN's Tom Foreman has that. Don, investigators have to consider the possibility that weather brought this plane down because it went through such a huge band of terrible storms out there. And here are the three key questions viewers keep asking us. First, could lightning have done this? The answer is not likely. Modern aircraft are designed so they can be hit by lightning. The lightning travels along the metal skin and then is ejected off the wingtips or off the tail. Very unlikely that it would hit some sort of internal piece and do so much damage that it would bring the plane down. Second question, what if this storm is just huge and massive and so powerful that it creates huge turbulence and essentially tears the plane apart in flight? Again, very unlikely. If there's a maintenance problem, if there's something already wrong with the plane, then maybe that could happen, but not to a healthy plane in most circumstances. 
you mentioned the brace position there. Uh, you were presumably all refreshed on the safety procedures for these kind of landings before that landing was made, were you? Yeah, we were given a safety briefing probably two hours before we actually landed and then reminded a number of times. And then obviously when we went through it, it was a pretty calm procedure because they'd run through, through it a few times. Um, I mean, I think that was what alerted when they first said brace position and, and uh, emergency landing, you could see a sort of look, a sigh go through the plane. But as we went on and obviously we were going round and round circles and trying some procedures to release the wheels, people got used to the idea. And because the crew were so calm, it made us calm. Um, you know, you normally go on these flights and you're more worried about whether you, you know, your food's going to be hot or cold or you know, whether you're going to be upgraded. But really, this is what matters and the crew were amazing. Tom, there were some passengers who saw flames shooting past their windows on flight 5927 and they thought they were not going to make it. Tonight, they are counting their blessings. On his way back to New Hampshire to visit family for New Year's, John Vian recorded this. I thought I was going to die and I was like, I'm going to take this video just to be my, this is, this is what happened, guys, <laughs> basically. Vian says his bursts of flames kept shooting past his side of the plane. The mood in the cabin went from tense to panicked. It was just constant, just bang, flames, bang, flames. The whole plane was shaking. Everyone on it started like, it was it turned like hysteria. Like people were crying and we thought it was the end of our lives. The pilot turned around and made a safe landing back in Philadelphia where crews quickly began to examine the engine that failed. Everyone else got on another plane, and once in Manchester, those passengers recounted their harrowing mid-air ordeal. The plane was jerking back and forth. Have you ever had that happen? No. Yeah, kind of scary. The worst part was when they kept re trying to start restarting the engine, and it kept, it kept doing the same thing over again, the plane kept shaking. And that was the worst part, because no one knew what was going on at that point. John Vien says that touchdown in Philadelphia was greeted with cheers and relief. When we got on the ground, people applauded. People were crying. People, it was, it was like we were giving new, we were given new life. <laughs> like, I was convinced we were going to die in the air until we hit the ground. This New Year's Eve has been a day of breaking news, starting with a Metro helicopter crashing in the middle of a neighborhood in the valley. The two officers were taken to UMC, but they're expected to be okay. We talked with a neighbor who saw the whole thing. When I came down McWilliams, it looked like he was banking it in and had to come back around and line it. I don't know how he made it so straight down that street. Well, Richard Kelly says he was the first person on the scene and even ran up to the helicopter to try to help the officers out. And by that time, though, police had arrived, told him to get away from the crash for his own safety. Your life jacket is below your seat. You do not need your life jacket. We are landing on land. Leave your life jacket where it is. When you hear the command, brace, brace, you must adopt the brace position shown on your safety card. You must stay in the brace position until the aircraft stops completely. I repeat, you must stay in the brace position until the aircraft stops completely. When the aircraft stops, you may or may not hear, depending on whether the captain expects to evacuate. Should he want an evacuation, you will hear this is an emergency evacuation. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Only upon hearing that, you must open your seatbelts, leave quickly, leave everything behind, from the lights along the aisles and to the nearest exit, which the crew are now committing to. You must look at your exits now, your nearest could be behind you. Stay calm, read your safety card, and practice the place position and now. 